Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of FIFA 15 Career Mode here with West Ham. My last video was a FIFA Career Mode video with West Ham. You wait for three weeks and two come along within three days. The, the last episode was obviously a very positive episode because it started off brilliantly with the 1-0 win against Chelsea in the Barclays Premier League before we managed to beat AIK to, to a sort of maintain our 100% record in the Europa League group stages and then we went and beat QPR as well in the Premier League. Now, as you've seen in the background in the calendar, we are starting to get very close now to January. The first game of this episode will still be in December, that is what you're seeing me prepare for now being the Watford game. Then we play QPR and Norwich, both of those games now being in January. So in this episode, we will cross over into the January transfer window and I'll ask you about that some more in my question of the day a little bit later on in the episode. But for now, we are stepping out to a very snowy pitch here at Watford. I think we're at home actually for this game. There you can see the starting lineup, Scuffe in goal, Uchida and Titi, Reed Willems there at the back. Now before this game, you should know Watford are at the bottom of the table with five points. So in reality, this should be a fairly easy game given we've had 18 games of the season. As you can see there, Joel Ekstrand giving the ball away to Lassie Schoener for the first chance of the game, but a good save there from Bond in the Watford goal after just 12 minutes and cleared by Paredes. Now a lovely one-two there between Vinaldum and Valencia sees Vinaldum through, but what a challenge that is from the Swede Ekstrand after a pretty poor touch there from Vinaldum going forward. And in general, Watford were extremely hard to break down, so much so that it actually made me wonder how the heck they're bottom of the table with five points after 18 games. They've only won one game all season, and they were so solid at the back. Extremely negative, however. The first chance for them came in only in the 41st minute when Tozer has forced a save there out of our young Italian goalkeeper, Scuffe. Now moving into the second half, Valencia doing well to get away from the defenders, but a good challenge there uh, in the end at the death. And that was sort of what summed up the game in the end. Bond is going to roll it out, though, to his defender. That's Beckham. It's a pretty poor pass, though. Tozer can't really control it. Delph now with a bit of luck there, coming off his heel. He's now clean through there with a, a lot of luck, and he's managed to slot it past Bond and finally we break down Watford through a mistake of their own and through a lot of luck as well and Delph in the end slotting it past the goalkeeper potentially his first goal for, for West Ham I'm not entirely sure but we do take the lead there through Watford pretty much pressing the self-destruct button Zerate going forward there as well and now Watford coming forward there great turn from Igalo he's clean through and that is a that's a fantastic goal from Odie and Igalo and, and my controller's gone my uh, near and stop raging for in hindsight, it is a pretty good goal, but I was perhaps a little bit frustrated with the fact that we were now drawing with bottom of the table, and not just bottom of the table, resoundingly bottom of the table, but Zarate crosses it in for Lasse Schoener just a few minutes later into the 75th minute there, and Schoener slots it past Bond. I'm going to be honest with you, that was a shot from Zarate. It wasn't meant to be a cross. In the end, it did work out, and we do take a 2-1 lead fairly promptly after Watford equalised, and we almost took a 3-1 lead there in the 86th minute, but Zarate yet again hitting at the post from a free kick and it did in the end end 2-1 but I'm not entirely sure there is a game I'm dreading more than the reverse fixture of this one Watford are so annoying to play they're so negative but also so awesome when they do go forward they just pass it around you like they're Barcelona despite being bottom of the table with five points Delph getting man of the match they're good ratings as well for Koyate and Scherner who of course came off but of course did score the winning goal and now you can see after that game confirmation we are now into the January transfer window so you can definitely feel free to drop some suggestions for players to buy I haven't got much money but it does appear we're going to get quite a few offers for Ener Valencia. I'll perhaps talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but we don't have much money for now. But we're hopefully going to sell a few players and bring in a little bit more cash. So we've got any sort of lo slightly low budget type players. Not ridiculously low budget. But less than sort of five or six million. And I'll explain later. Uh, just drop that in the comment section below. I'll read through all of them. And I'll try and get those done for you. But now moving on to the football the stuff on the pitch. We are going to be playing QPR. For, for a second episode in a row. Back-to-back -back episodes we play QPR. Not a clue how it's happened on the fixture list, but we do again play QPR. Just one Premier League game after we played them away from home at Loftus Road. So in this game here, you can see the starting line of 4-1-2-1-2. Ravel Morrison coming in to replace Vinaldum, Sharon and Ayu out on the wings. Koyate coming in to replace Delvin Zarate and Valencia up front. But QPR would have the first chance of the game there. Leroy Fair dragging it just wide there of Scuffet's post. Fairly lucky, actually, that one. And QPR going forward yet again, this time with Cardozo. He gives it to Charlie Austin. It's a great save in the end after the sliding tackle from Willems. And Sandro can't really get rid of it. Ayu now... Uh, going to try and get rid of it. That's a poor clearance. And yet again from Umtiti. This is poor defending. Hoyle it there. Passes it across to Austin. And um, I just apologise so much. Because that is perhaps the worst defending I've ever shown you in a career. And that was absolutely appalling. But we do 
Well, we're behind. We're behind now against QPR, but Valencia's going to try and change that, forcing some space, and that is a fantastic finish into the bottom corner from the Ecuadorian Valencia. They're equalising just eight minutes after QPR took the lead, and an unstoppable strike there into the bottom corner. McCarthy not getting anywhere near it, but again, QPR going forward, this time with Yunsuk Young there. Schoener not tracking the run. It's into the box for Cardozo, and that is a great header to again restore QPR's lead just three minutes later, and it's 2-1 now to QPR. We're at home, and we're losing... And this, I mean, it could get worse as Cardozo unleashes a strike from long range, but Scuffe with a good save. Now we go forward again at the end of the half. Valencia trying to work some space again. He's hit the post. It's bounced off McCarthy, but it bounces kindly. Doesn't even go out for a corner. Could have even gone in off McCarthy in the end, but it's headed out now from a corner into the second half towards Vellum. He's going to try and work some space. He's done that well. He's going to force a, sa force a save there from McCarthy onto the post. And Valencia is there to nod in on the rebound with a diving header. And in the it's 2-2. But we are working, we are having to work harder for this than would have been initially expected. 2-2 now, and that is how the game would finally end. You could probably say two points drop, but we were behind for significant parts of that game. In the end, Valencia gets man of the match after his two goals, and some good ratings as well for Schoenner, but some pretty poor defensive performances. Scuffe doing a good job, but the two guys in front of him really letting him down. So after that fairly disappointing defensive performance, now you can see as we start to move on towards transfer stuff, here are some of the players that I'm going to be trying to sell. Chambers and Poye going out on loan. Yaskalain and Noble look as if they're going to be going out the door. Noble I don't use, and Yaskalain I'm getting rid of because he's, he's got fairly high wages. Might be able to do a swap deal that involves a player with lower wages to allow for some pre-season, uh, some pre-contract agreements, sorry. But again, loads of offers coming in for Ene Valencia, slapping some fairly high... Uh, counter offers on them as Leo Chambers goes out to Bolton on loan but now it is time for my question of the day um, and this is it's a sort of dual part one the first one is as, as I mentioned earlier players you would like to see me sign uh, whether it be on a pre-contract agreement or just in general at this point in time you know actual like full-on fully fledged transfers uh, right now the second part is the fact we're getting so many offers for NA Valencia do we cash in on him and give people a realistic counter offer say sort of 10 to 12 million Valencia is a very good player but he is only 74 stat we could probably bring in a better striker for 10 to 12 million so drop them in the comment section below should I cash in on NA Valencia potentially bring in a new striker before the end of the transfer window or keep him and beyond that who else would you like me to sign whether it be on a pre-contract agreement or just in general but now it is time to get into the third and final game of this episode and we play Norwich another team we played fairly recently only two episodes ago yet again in the Barclays Premier League obviously we had a very tricky game against them last time going behind and then salvaging a one-all draw Sacco coming into the side to play up front there, the 4-2-3-1 formation with Ayu and Downing as the wingers, Vinaldum as the attacking mid, and Koyate and Delph as defensive mids. But now Hooper sets away already, and a great challenge there from Umtiti, last ditch stuff there, and preventing a surefire goal with the one-on-one -on -one opportunity there for Hooper. But Koyate doing well to skip away from a challenge. Now he's set through Ayu with the uh, through ball. Ayu cuts back, and he's going to try and unleash a shot there, but he's taken down. Surely a penalty, it is. And uh, only our second penalty, I do believe, of this season, but we have grabbed one here against Norwich fairly early on. Bradley Johnson gives it away. It's going to be Vinaldum who steps up. Will he be able to put it past John Ruddy? He does, and what a penalty that is, right into the top left as we're looking at it. Fantastic penalty from Vinaldum to give us an early 1-0 lead there in just the 11th minute, and now Coyate setting forward. Sacco, he's done well to get onto the end of it. Will it be 2-0 in the 32nd minute? It is. Diafra Sacco there with a lovely finish past John Ruddy to make it 2-0. Not many chances between those two goals, but yet again... We score, and now it is 2-0. A very good performance in comparison to the one we, uh, the well, the last performance when we played Norwich. Vinaldum now going down the wing, getting past uh, Russell Martin. He crosses it back towards Downing. It's a pretty poor attempt at a clearance from Martin Olsen. It drops kindly to Downing, and he's there to half volley it in on his weak foot to make it 3-0. There were no chances in this game beyond goals. It was quite incredible. We're now Downing setting forward Diafra Sacco again in just the 49th minute. Only a few uh, minutes after that third goal. It's back towards Vinaldo. And what a volley that is down into the bottom corner just like three minutes after the third goal. Sacco setting up Vinaldo. And what a full-time volley strike that is. Down into the bottom corner. Not an extravagant finish. He didn't go right into the top corner. But a fantastic volley nonetheless. Brilliant technique from Vinaldo. And we're leading 4-0. A very flattering scoreline. Atsuto Uchida has taken matters into his own hands. He's run through the entire Norwich team. He tries to dink it over the goalkeeper. But a fantastic save from Ruddy. And now Norwich finally going forward with Nathan Redmond. He crosses it into the box. Does well to get there. And it's right onto the head there of Gary Hooper in the 68th minute to make it 4-1. We lose the clean sheet. It's pretty poor from Karen Reckett. Yet again, poor defending. He lets Hooper 
uh, just roam free in the middle of the penalty area and that is the end of the game we do end up taking the win at 4-1 unfortunately no uh, ratings because I may have forgotten to click on it but as you can see there in the background Alan Traore is back for action I'll go into that a little bit later on here are some of the players you can see uh, that we're going to be looking at pre-contract agreements Nicholas and Kolu uh, Thomas Ince Clement Gronier and also after that we've got Joel Matip of Schalke the 24 year old centre back so these are a few guys you can sort of tell me in the comment section whether you'd like me to sign if I can get the funds together for wages because uh, obviously you do have to pay their wages until they arrive in July if you don't want me to tell me that in the comment section as well and, and sort of give me some other suggestions uh, for players you would like to see me buy but yet again, not for the first time this episode, we're getting another offer for NA Valencia, this time from FC20. Again, we're going to sort of put about a 14-odd million sort of counter-offer on, and then again from St. Etienne. So NA Valencia, clearly flavour of the month out of the squad we have at the moment. And you never know, we might be able to get a fairly decent amount of cash. I haven't heard back from any of the clubs yet about that sort of type, that sort of thing, uh, or any of the counter offers we've put in place. But as you can see now, here is the table. It's changed a fair amount after last episode. Liverpool, about an absolute shocker of an episode, down to fourth from being top of the table by about six points. United now top from Arsenal. We found ourselves now third. We've gone from eighth to third in one fan in two episodes absolutely fantastic stuff in the end and uh, yeah well what an episode it's been feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome subscribe if you are new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much as well as your suggestions for players to buy on con pre contract agreements or just outright in this transfer window i do hope you've enjoyed this episode that leaves me with enough time to say it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a good day enjoy yourselves and it's been you know what it's been a while since I did an outro. I reckon I reckon at some point I should just slap an outro on a video. I think it would be really